Hi everyone, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra. We're sitting here at Wilderness Tactical in Phoenix with my friend Brian from Mountain Man Medical. Uh, figured, again, the medic uh, will talk to us about medical stuff. And we have a new tourniquet here that is recently uh, Committee of Tactical Combat Casualty Care approved. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's an interesting one. So we're gonna do this one here as a gear review of the tactical medical tourniquet. Big Tech's Outdoors has holsters, accessories, optics, and other parts that you need as a self-defender. I'm one of his customers and I recommend him highly. Check out the page on our website with our favorite deals. Uh, so Brian, I know you're a huge fan of the cat and the soft tee, right? Yeah. Um, so do you see, let's talk about this guy a little bit. Um, it's brand new. Now again, here, here's the big thing. When somebody says, John, um, is it is this good enough? It's approved by the Committee of Tactical Combat Casualty Care. It's good enough for me. They're the experts, yeah. right? They, they're literally the think tank that is government funded that says, uh, we need to stop traumatic bleeding. And if they say, this one will do it, full stop. <laughs> now, uh, I think a couple things that you can see. It looks very much like a combat application tourniquet. It looks very similar to a cat. In, in fact, when I first looked at it, I was like, I wonder if North American Rescue is having some, uh, you know, uh, patent problems yeah. with this guy here. Um, different uh, materials, maybe, but very similar design. I will say this, this is a, a genuine cat versus the uh, tactical medical tourniquet. It is, uh, as you can see here, if I bring those up to you, you can see the fact this guy's thicker. Uh, it's wider, I guess as I should say, um, than the cat. And do you like wider versus not so wide? The wider the tourniquet, the better. Like uh, sometimes you'll see um, in, in the hospitals, they'll have a tourniquet that is like literally this wide that they pump up with air. Um, and so the wider the tourniquet, the better because you're able to compress more tissue space and you're able to put more pressure on the artery to control that bleeding. So wide is good. And less pain, right? So yes, yes. less pain for the same level of occlusion probably out of something. Else. I don't care too much about that. Pain is not really my issue. I'm here to save a life. So, right. But the casualty will definitely care. Well, definitely. That. Yeah, I'd be grateful for that. Yeah. Uh, a couple of other things that I think are kind of interesting here. Uh, I, I think comparing this to a cat because it looks so similar right. is, is very good. This is a, uh, a actual, legit, authentic combat application tourniquet. Again, you can see has the correct markings and all that stuff. We had put that on this in showing it in a previous video. So uh, you've got a windlass here, all that. Now the cat, uh, the way that you get into the bottom of it is with this red um, tab. Right, but I do think it's kind of interesting because the red tab is velcroed as well, so it can get velcroed down, and now it's stuck, and now I got to peel it in order to get it off. Uh, I do think it's kind of neat though that this tactical medical tourniquet has kind of like a bulbous end, like you can see here. I'm going to show it to you like that. That it's not velcroed at the end, and it's got like a little, like a piece in there. So it's it's something that I can really kind of get a hold of, which. Um, yeah, I think people don't think about this a lot. When somebody's bleeding to death and I'm adrenalized, I lose like 30 IQ points. Yeah, uh, I get real stupid real fast. And my hands tend not to like to work. Turn into mittens. And they really kind of do. So I go, they're just uh, open. Yeah. And, and that's pretty good, right? So I can uh, get this guy to open quite a ways if I need to. But an another thing that I kind of like, I've done this with a cat in training before, that when I try to open it up, I pull the thing all the way through. Uh, which is one of the ways that if you needed to thread a cat through something, you would do that, right? right? But this guy won't do that because it hits that little lump. And so I can crank this sucker as far out as I can, and it's not going to come loose and out of that. Now, uh, that seems kind of nifty um, because, again, I've got my mittens. Um, the other thing that I really like about that is you want to get this as tight as possible initially. So that gives you an extra thing to grip so that you can get it nice and tight before you turn the windlass. If it's not tight enough before you turn the windlass, you probably won't get it tight enough. In training, I always say, if you're not complaining about how tight it is before you start windlassing, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. You, should, you should feel like, ah, oh, it's miserable already. Now I start with my windlass. So man, I like that. A little extra kind of grippiness and you know, you stick your foot on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but of course now that, one of the things that we do have to do is we might have uh, a stuck limb or something like that that we got to work around. And this guy, very much like a soft tee, has a clip, right? So that clip pops right out and actually comes out pretty easy and back together pretty easy. Um, nice big windlass. I, it, I guess I will say this windlass feels a little 
smaller? Is it smaller? I mean, it's within a half an inch, a probably a quarter inch in either direction from the cat windlass, uh, but it feels smaller to me and a little narrower. Um, it does have this one single way clip, so it doesn't have the both ways clip. So you do want to turn it in that clockwise direction and it snaps in there in order to stay secure. Um, so I, I think it's maybe a little bit of hubris for us to say, well, what do you think of it, Brian? Because of course, if the committee yeah, approves it, what am I gonna say? What are we gonna say? Um, but I mean, as far as features go, do you like this akin to a cat? I love it because it's it's kind of like the best of both worlds with the soft T and the cat. They combine like kind of like the best parts of both of them yeah. into one good solid ticket. And the, the Committee of Tactical Combat Casualty Care, they say that it's good. They've done all my thinking for me because I have not tested this on people before. I have done the cat and the soft T wide on real people before, and they've worked fantastic, but, you know, of course not this. But I trust the Committee of Tactical Combat Casualty Care to shoot straight and tell me what I need to use. So the only thing I'm worried about here, and I'm still trying to figure out, is flat packing it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, is one that we have not... And that's just maybe spending some time. Can I see it getting to a place where it, I mean, that's not bad. That's just me messing around with it, kind of figuring that. Is that, uh, I think with a little bit of work, we could probably get there, you know, uh, to a place where it packs down tight enough to be in there. Um, so here's the bigger question. Is this going to replace your cat? Is this going to replace your softy? I don't know. I don't know. I, I like it. I think it's a good tourniquet. It's hard for me to, to pass up on something that I've used so many times right. successfully to go to something new, but I, I don't think I'd have a problem with it. So uh, we're going to, to maybe practice on one of these a few times and maybe it might make a change for us. Um, if you go on Mountain Man Medical, you can pick one of these up. If you like, I always recommend if you're going to pick up a tourniquet, you pick up two, right? Uh, and the reason is, is that uh, once you've used it, uh, I always say you don't know how many times you can use it before it maybe goes south, and so you pick one up to train with and one to carry uh, and use in a life-saving environment. Um, uh, never use the tourniquet you're trusting to save your life for training. You have to. Right. Uh, so, so you know, pick a second one up. Um, but, I, man, I like the clip. I think that's the best feature of the soft key. Uh, it's got that. I like the, the how, how easy this is to adjust. I think that's a really good feature. Man, that's pretty cool. We're going to keep messing with it, but this is definitely one to try. And again, because uh, Committee of Tactical Combat Casualty Care is approved, I think it's a winner. Absolutely. And hey, man, uh, this is a cool stuff. Now, one last bit. I think when you say, wait a minute, I've used uh, a soft tee numerous times on actual real life saves. Why would I go to something new? But I love that you're open-minded enough to go, well, maybe that does some things that mine didn't before, mm -hmm. you know? Um, that's like saying, well, you know, hey, man, uh, we fought a war with the M1 Garand and won it, so yeah. why in the world would we want to upgrade? <laughs> well, sometimes we upgrade technology and things get better and we can do things better, you know? Yeah, well, different gear for different environments and different people. Like, just because this works better for me doesn't mean that the SWAT T won't work for you or the CAT or the soft T. It depends on your situation, depends on you and your mission. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to keep messing with this, guys. Uh, I think it's definitely a contender.